Hey guys, me, Ronald Chris Tomer here with this afternoon mountain weather update. All right, here's what I'm seeing, and we'll really focus on this 226, 227 storm, but there are two total storm systems. So overall, the trend this afternoon, faster, weaker storm system on 226, 227 for the Intermountain West. Still looking like a robust storm system, but many of the totals I've had to trim down instead of up. So here's what I'm thinking. Wasatch, one to two feet, and that's still big but not as big as it was a couple of days ago. 226 into the morning of 227. Tetons, one to two feet, 226, 227. Colorado, 10 to 20 inches. Some places will get less. 226 into the morning of 227. Idaho, four to 12 inches, mainly on 226. So you might be asking, well, why? Um, it does have to do with the position of um, the, the parent low, the main low that comes out of the northern branch. It's a little bit further north, and it's a little bit faster. There's not as much of a merger with the two jets. Because of that faster, more progressive flow, the moisture just isn't able to hang around as long. You don't generate as much precip. The lift isn't quite as strong for as long. So all these factors, you have no choice to trim it down. Storm number two, though, 229 through 34, is looking major. If It's just as big as this first storm, if not bigger. And I'll show you why here in just a few in this update. All right, so let me take you over to a water vapor satellite imagery this, morning, this afternoon. Here's the view. Here's our low pressure, um, and that's approaching California. It's going to take a couple of days. And then here's the bigger low. This is the one that's driving the pattern that will come down into the lower 48 on the northern branch. Now, there will be some merger between these two areas of low pressure. This one's riding the southern branch. This one's riding the northern branch, but this one is the dominator. This one will come down. And again, there will be some merger here over the Intermountain West, but not as much as what uh, we were thinking about a couple of days ago. And I, I just don't see it being quite as potent on that low. Not, it's not going to dig as far to the south. So here's the jet pattern by the end of the day today. This is the afternoon update in the jet, and there it is. Here's tomorrow, 224. Here's 225. Here's the key time frame on 226. So both jets are coming together, bringing both pieces of energy in. This will be a key time frame. There will be some decent dynamics for a short time. And then by 227, it's still snowing, but it's going to come to an end about 12 hours earlier than we previously would have hoped. So then it moves away. And then we get into some high-pressure ridging across the Intermountain West for a couple of days. But look at the next storm building, loading up on the northern branch. This is going to be a major storm, big-time trough. Here it comes. By 229 into 31 hits California, and it's going to hit the Sierra very hard. Here's 32. Starts to make its move into the interior through 33, and it would continue to snow into 34 in most of Colorado. But this that looks like a major storm. All right, here's the precip on top of everything. So that's the current state of affairs. A couple of dry days here for the Intermountain West. Um, and then eventually here come the two jets merging in. There's 226. You can see the snow, and it does develop early on Monday. Um, across uh, Colorado, the Tetons, and most of the Wasatch. But here's where it really picks up, right there. See the frontal boundary coming south with the jet? Uh, 226 in the afternoon, things really pick up into 226 nighttime, into early 227. That's the key window. And you can see how that frontal boundary slides through Colorado into 227 in the morning. That's where the intensity will be at its max. And then it moves through and it's over, 12 hours early. Now we have to wait with that high pressure ridging, and here comes the next storm system. It's going to dig further to the south into California and snow for a couple of days with potentially some atmospheric river involvement in the Sierra. So here's 3-3 in the morning. Everything makes its move into Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, and eventually Colorado, and it snows through 3-3 nighttime, big time. Okay, let's look at the latest numbers where the rubber meets the road here. Here's what I'm thinking in this afternoon update. So the rest of today through 225. Uh, the bulk of everything is up there uh, in Washington and uh, B.C. Some great snow up there for this, that time period. Here's the key time frame. So this is 226 through 228. I'm going one to two feet in the Wasatch. Considerably less up there in Park City, Deer Valley, only about 11 to 12 inches snow basin. Big and cottonwood will squeeze out probably two feet. In Colorado, the numbers have trended down. Still looking at probably 8 to 16 inches for most places. Might as well call it 10 to 20. Um, and you can see where the numbers are going to be highest. Crested Butte, Aspen Snowmass, Vail, parts of um, 
Loveland, right on top of the Continental Divide, and then angling up towards Steamboat. You'll probably get the biggest grand totals up there around Steamboat, Buffalo Pass. Um, about a foot, maybe more, up in the Tetons. My optimism has grown just a little bit for the Tetons. But uh, feet of snow up there in the Pacific Northwest, up into BC, another great period for BC, interior BC as well. Final time period, 229 through 33. This is, a, this is that second storm system. A couple of feet, solid there for the Wasatch. One to two feet for the Tetons. And the numbers in Colorado would continue to go up on 3-4. I'm thinking probably 8 to 16 inches for most of Colorado. And look at the numbers in the Sierra through this time frame alone. 40, 50, 60 inches. That's why I'm thinking there probably is some atmospheric river contributions. About a, about a foot there in Idaho, about a foot through northwest Montana, and one to two feet up in the Pacific Northwest. Another good period for interior BC. I mean, we're looking at probably two solid feet, um, maybe more, during this entire period, this grand total period up there in interior BC. All right, one last stop. Not much change here. And the northeast, very light snows, again, around 228 and then potentially early into March. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this afternoon mountain weather update. Obviously, obviously some changes trending down on intensity, but still a robust storm system on 226, 227. Take care, guys. Have a great weekend.